Sanjeev, Arun, and Maiti are patrolling the world's most dangerous mangroves, the Sundarban. Every day they get on their boat, braving storms, the tides, and go on a mission. A mission to save the tiger and its ecosystem. Yesterday there was a major storm. It caused havoc in the area and they are inspecting the banks to check the condition of the net fencing and the loss to habitat. In such conditions, the tiger moves a lot, strain into human settlements, and that's what no one wants. And spotting the tiger is very difficult. The mangroves and low-hanging tree branches press down the banks. Sharp breathing roots sticking out of the mud, just a mere leap away for the tiger. The guards watch out for tigers on the land, crocodiles in the water, while remaining alert to falling snakes from the overhanging tree branches. Life starts its cycle each day in the world's largest coastal mangrove forest. Every day, as the sun rises in this deltaic archipelago, its mangrove-laden islands starts to come to life. The eerie beauty of the islands starts to break with human settlements starting their day. With a population of over four million, the Sundarbans area is one of the most densely populated in the world, and the population is increasing. As a result, half of this ecoregion's mangrove forests have been cut down to supply fuel wood and other natural resources. The livelihood of all the inhabitants of the villages are directly dependent on this great coastal forest. These villages are now separated only by a river from the forest heartland. The name Sundarban can be literally translated as beautiful forest in the Bengali language and is also believed to have been derived from the Sundari trees, a mangrove species found here in large numbers. The muddy forest floor is covered with millions of spiny aerial roots of the mangroves. Life starts its cycle each day in the world's largest coastal mangrove forest. A network of marine streams, mud shores and mangrove forests has protected numerous wildlife species, including birds, spotted deer, crocodiles, reptiles, and the Royal Bengal Tiger. About 4,000 square kilometers, Indian part of Sundarbans, have been relentlessly protected by a handful of people, the West Bengal Forest Department. Conservation of the world's largest mangrove forest in totality is the precondition of survival for the Royal Bengal Tiger. For achieving this objective, the management of Sundarban Tiger Reserve has to resolve the age-old human-tiger conflict. This is one of the most important concerns for Nilanjan Malik and his team. Today, he has called for the Protection Monitoring Protocol meeting. Rangers, beat officers, forest guards and senior personnel all arrive before the Chief Conservator of Forest and Field Director, Mr. Nilanjan Malik, arrives. At the meeting, the team gets directions on new practices, initiatives which are essential for the team for effective operations.
conservation of the world's largest mangrove forest, in totality, is the precondition of survival for the Royal Bengal Tiger. For achieving this objective, the management of Sundarban Tiger Reserve has to resolve the age-old human-tiger conflict. Into the village area from the forest area and, that, and then the conflict comes. Now we have devised a very unique technique, you can see that in the forest area we have about 96 running kilometer of forest and village interface wherein we have you know, erected nylon net fencing throughout this 96 running kilometer and that has given us a very good result in controlling and managing this man-animal conflict. Rajesh Mukherjee, beat officer, Sajnakali Range, is leading the team to the far end of the reserve where the net fencing is being repaired. All material is loaded into a small motorboat. This boat is extremely crucial as this helps them dock easily and navigate with ease in the shallowest of creeks. Ranjit Mandal has been driving the boat now for over five years and he knows every creek and its depth. After an hour-long drive, the team finally reaches the destination. Rajib and Arun seek blessings from the goddess Bonbibi and proceed with their work. This is prime tiger territory. The threat from a tiger attack looms large. Mating tigers were seen here a couple of days ago. It's so dense that visibility beyond a couple of meters is nil. Arun first inspects the area and stands guard for the team to start the clearing process. This is a team effort. Everyone participates in the process. Rajib as a forest guard, to Ranjit who is the Maji or the boat driver. A limited number of trees are cut in a straight line to create a clearing. The entire place though, in the thick of the forest, is full of plastic waste which has been carelessly littered by tourist boats and the high tide brings them here and they remain here when the waters recede. They not only pollute the environment but add more work for the guards to clean under their plastic removal activities. Once the clearing is made, bamboo is brought in and the pole erection process starts. It's extremely hard work as this is all manually done sunk deep and secure so that they can survive the strongest of tides and storms. The terrain is extremely difficult and the team has got used to work on these sharp airborne routes. Bamboo after bamboo, the team goes on and the framework is in place. The nets come in and the binding cords weaved in so that they can be raised and put in place. Nothing of the forest is wasted. The branches are used to make natural clamps. These clamps hold the nets to the ground. And as a matter of fact, these natural clamps are extremely strong. This hard and daunting work, a kilometer stretch, will take them a full day in the sweltering sun. And then Rajib, Arun, and the jubilant team returns to the boat to head home with a feeling that they have managed to separate the lives of the tiger from the lives of the humans, which is essential for the habitat to survive. Tomorrow will bring in new challenges. One more thing I want to uh, say here that the, uh, without the active support and help from the villagers who live nearby, we cannot save this area. 
like as you already know that conservation cannot be achieved in isolation we have to take everybody's help and the major stakeholders are jet but the forest the administration they can't do this without cooperation from villagers the forest department has set up jfmcs or joint forest management committees in all villages adjacent to the reserve forests a good part of the tourism revenue is distributed to these committees for village eco-development and forest protection. Rajesh visits the village every week and meets the villagers. Today is not a scheduled visit, but stops to meet some of the villages and plan the dates and key points for the next JFMC meeting. Guided by forest officials like Rajesh, these committees help create awareness about saving the mangroves and assist forest guards in patrolling. They undertake basic development work, like making brick roads and irrigation canals, digging freshwater ponds, or vocational training and input in cottage industries. Villagers are encouraged to form self-help groups and start small businesses like rearing poultry, pigs, and goats. When the cyclones and the tsunami happened, their ponds overflowed and the low tide looked like the high tide. That's when the villagers first realized the importance of their mangroves. They know they are first in the line of danger. They know now that if the tiger and mangrove stay... Well, the confidence of the local people have, have now come in favor of the forest department. So here conservation has become much, much easier, fingers crossed. And for all these regions, the reasons, the forest guards are the bridges between the forest department and the local people. They are the people who play the crucial role of keeping both these ends connected. Ranjit, Sunil, Ikna are the invincible dog squad of the Sunderban Tiger Reserve. They are the only dog squad in the reserve and also serve other protected areas in the state. Over the last few years, they have solved a number of poaching cases. They are on a routine patrolling, tracking and searching drill in Pakirala village. Ikna's presence and skills are an amazement to the village, but at the same time, it clearly sends a message that, no matter where the culprit hides, Ikna will find him. This is the honey collection season. Honey collection is highly dangerous as it takes place right in the core of tiger habitat. This is a seasonal group activity. Usually a team of eight to 10 members is led by a moly into the forest. Moleys are known for their traditional wisdom and experts in identifying beehives by observing the flying directions of bees in a dense forest and are skilled in beehive cutting and the honey collection techniques. About 3% of the population is involved in this activity. And on an average, each team collects about 300 to 400 quintals of honey and 1,000 kilograms of wax are collected annually. Honey collectors from across the region brave the weather, the tiger and the tides to sell their honey to the forest department. It keeps Rajesh and his team completely busy with hundreds of honey collectors bring in the honey to sell it to the forest department. And it goes on late into the day during the peak season. This regulation is important to control the entry of the honey collectors into the forest 
and also help them earn a living, though a dangerous one. The tiger has been spotted in this area, and Rajib decides to continue their search in the night, hoping this will prevent the tiger from straying in the village. The night patrolling is one of the most dangerous activities in a smaller boat, as the Sunderbund tiger is the most adept swimmer and capable of launching an attack in the water. This patrolling team is stationed 24-7 in the Sadokali floating camp. This camp is their home. The beds double up as desks during the day, and this area becomes a control room. Solar-powered stations for charging wireless sets, mobiles and searchlights, and powering internal lights and fans. Food is prepared for the guards here, and this boat is their hub of action, be it the sun, storms or rain. There are dangers every day when the team sets out for their work. Some dangerous encounters which they have directly experienced and some which happened in front of them. But all of these incidents don't deter them and their love for the forest.
एक टू पूरा नो कि शेठा अमरा बोल्लाम जे इटा ठीक होवे कि ना देखून जो तब बोलो ना चलो आर एक टू खुजे देखी खुजे देखते देखे आर पागमर्क पावा गैलो ना तो तो खून अमरा आवाज़ शे ही पागमर्क के धारे फिरे आश्लम फिरे ऐसे फिरे जो ऐसी ऐसे एक बार अमरा लाइन हुए दाढ़ी ची जे वही पागमर्क टा नीत जेहतु आमार काचे प्लास्टर पेरिस जॉल कार्ट एग्लो अंतो होय जे पाग में जे प्लास्टर पेरिस गुलाज जोनो जे गामला छे गामला टाव नहीं आस्ता होय तो आमी बोलूँ जे दे इटा अंतो होय ता हले आमी वो एग्लो नहीं आशी आमी जीएस कोलम जे इच हफ्ता दाल नीते गले आवके ताले प्लास्टर पेरिस कार्ट जॉल गामला एग तो बोलें है ये टाइम नया जावे बोले उन अरा दारी ये था इसे ना अभी एवं शोए जाची एवं शोए एक टा शुक्लो कार्ड देखते पे ची तो वही कार्ड टा जालने इसे भी व्यवहार करा हुआ है तो वही जालने टा देखा नेवार जोनो अभी जो कौन टांडी है ची भीतरे जो बाग टा छीलो शेटा आम्रा क्यों बुझ द बोले उन्हें छिट के गये चार पांच हाथ दूरे गये पड़ लेन बाकटाओ तात्ते के दो तीन हाथ दूरे गये चे ऐत दूरे गये जो हमार क्लोज हुए गये चे हमार काचे काचे हुए जो दो ते के तीन हाथे काचे काचे हुए गये चे तो अमी देखला अमी जोखन माँ बोले चितकार करे उठलाम उठे ही तार पड़े देखलाम जे बाकटा जॉल के गया थे वो दुटो चीप खुलते गए इसलम वो चीप खुलते जी तो अकुन होच्छे बागे एक्सीडेंट करे एक्सीडेंट करे चे माने वो बाग टा माने माने बाग टा ऐसे पु आमर का एक झाम मार लो झाम मार पर आई बोची बाग वो जो छुटे ऐसे आमर का एक झाम मार लो झाम मार पर बागे से कुछ तो कुछ तो कुछ तो पुकड़े पुड़े जाए ऊपर हो जाओ, आम के सवाई तुले नहीं जाए, तुले नहीं जाए, हॉस्पिटल नहीं नहीं जाए, हॉस्पिटल नहीं जाए, हॉस्पिटल नहीं जाए, माता इस सलाई, मतलब आम राशि टा सलाई, जबकुन बागेश सुने आम लड़ाई हो ची, लड़ाई हो और पर पुकड़े पड़े जाए, पुकड़े पड़े जाए और परे तो मतलब उनके आरुद्धुचाजुन चिलाऊ मैं ही कर दिए चलो सब ए चोक ए कान माने चोके देखते पाए ना काने सुनते पाए ना बाएं साइड टेकूं एक दो मुकुनो काज करते पाए ना बागड़ा पुनो दिन आगे धोरे चिलाम बागड़ा पुनो दिन आगे धोरे बागड़ा माने वो जे रेडियो कलर पड़ा ना है बागेर गोला जे रेडियो कलर पड़ा ना बागेर गोला रेडियो कल साढे चार फुट हाइट, डेरिंग ची नोक, बागड़ा पुरुष पाक, जंगल आई भालवासी, जंगल आमर कुन आवश्य बिता नहीं, जंगले समस्तो काज कम्मो कुर्ची बा एक कैमरा बाता, खाचा बाता, तार पुरो जे कैट कलेक्शन, क्या 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 यार हो जे विभिन्न रोको में आमदे के जंगले ढूँकता है काज कुत्ता है, तो भय लगे, भय � आमला तो बाग माचा तो ये सी, बाग तो माता सी नहीं, सही जो नहीं, बाग ये जो नहीं। A population of four million, and some of the world's rarest species are dependent on the Sunderbans for their survival. But with increasing human intrusion and dependence on the forest, the ecological balance of the world's largest mangrove forest is at stake. Therefore, the number of tiger victims can only be reduced if less people enter forest. The forest department's efforts are a step in the right direction. People of Sunderbans need more schools and hospitals. They need more jetties, road and bridges to improve access to the mainland. Ironically, these are exactly what the Sunderman's tiger doesn't need.
the Sundarbans, one of the most diverse ecological biosphere in the world, is protected by the tiger. The tiger knows the destructive nature of humans and keeps guard, protecting the mangroves and its inhabitants. The tiger looks after the mangroves, keeping humans away. And the forest guards protect the tiger from the humans and the humans from the tiger. They know for sure that they are the only hope in protecting these last pockets of wilderness which we humans are relentlessly destroying. These guards have mastered the art of working in one of the most difficult terrains in the world and in extreme weather, be it the sun, storms, tides, or rain. They are the protectors of the mangroves, the habitat, and the people who live here. Living 24-7 in the humblest conditions, patrolling day and night, erecting fences, helping local communities, and mitigating conflict. They love their mangroves, the swamps, and their jobs. They truly are the guardians of the Sundarbans.